See the leash. Okay. So definitely, right away, you can see it's just like fear aggression. So yeah. he's actually he's showing a lot of aggression because he's scared. So that's his first attempt to scare people away from him. Uh, he is obviously also scared of dogs. That's why he does the same thing to dogs and people. Uh, so what he's doing is making noise and then lunging because he learned to use that as a way to keep people away from him. So because I took the leash and most people don't take the leash and stand that ground. It, he doesn't know what to do with himself. That's why he went to, now he goes to the root of the problem, which is just the fear. You know, he's just like in the shell, in his shell of like fear. Because it, they automatically naturally learn to use the aggression. So they will lunge and, and try to bite you because they know you work. That's like, it comes instinctively for them. And then most people, they're gonna be like, whoa, you know, they give space. And so the dog learns that that's exactly what they have to do. So meaning over time, they become more aggressive. Like they're more loud and lunging more. Um, because they, they learned that, that that's what keeps people away from him. Okay. So the first thing that I do, just because I'm going to work with him, I took over the leash, and that basically was, puts him in a position where now he's unsure, he doesn't know what to do. Because we have to address the root of the problem, which is like, give him more confidence, and that comes with us showing him what is ex expect, expected from him. We lead the way. So this means, you know, he has to be really good with his obedience and good with, on the leash, and someone is walking towards us, we can just tell him, leave it, and we're going to reinforce it. So it's not just telling him leave it, but we have to teach him that leave it means leave it. So when we say leave it, come this way, sit over here, he will be able to follow directions. So whenever he's uncomfortable, you give him directions and then you introduce him to people and dogs the right way. Because basically it's showing him like, see, you don't have to be afraid of these dogs, you don't have to be afraid of these people, you don't have to fight, you don't have to defend yourself, everything's gonna be okay. So it's kind of like a two step thing. First step, you get him under control, lead the way, and then second step is introduce him to people and dogs and teach him to be okay with them. Uh, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is just work with him a little bit on like his leash manners, because I wanna make sure he's able to follow directions on his commands and everything and see where he's at. Uh, as of right now, it's a learning process for him. So meaning uh, he might be doing a little bit better and then he might get spooked again and get aggressive and get unsure. So that's all normal, I'm expecting anything. It's just because he stopped barking right now, does not mean that he's comfortable with me, does not mean that the problem is solved. It's just understanding what, how the process looks like uh, for, for you and for him. So first thing right now is just, I'm gonna get him to come towards me a little bit. Come, let's go. He's kind of almost stuck under the chair. Oh. All right. So what you're gonna see now is a lot of uh, hesitation to come towards me. You see how he's pulling away? Because again, that's exactly why he shows aggression. It's okay. Shh. The, exactly why he shows aggression is uh, because he's afraid. And that's why he no longer wants to come close to me right now because he's petrified. Now, there's a couple things that we can do here. I can show you what to do and give you instructions, but I find that that route is not as effective because training is like any type of art. If you're learning to sing or you're learning to draw something, it takes time and practice and hands-on practice. So the, the only reason I'm gonna get him to me right now is because I, it gets him to a better level with me where I can give him directions. He's gonna, this approach, putting him through his fear, he's gonna get more comfortable with me much faster than if I don't do it. And so once I have him next to me and able to follow directions from me, I'm able to pass that training to you. Otherwise, I'm just telling you what to do right now, but like I said, it just, it's a lot of information that you have to take on. So this approach here, it's just, once he gets all the way here, oh, let me remove him from here. It's okay, right there. So basically when he starts, when he stops to pull away from me, because it's very against his will right now, he's very unsure of what's gonna happen. Right there. But then he's starting to process what's going on, like he's, he's not getting hurt. And that's literally him thinking like, what's gonna happen next? So that he's definitely very, very scared of what is about to happen. We'll go a couple different directions here. It's okay, come. Come, yes, come, perfect, good boy, it's okay. So he's almost like looking for comfort right now because he's so afraid. Now in the long run, comforting him is not gonna be the solution because it doesn't really justify the fear for him. Like it doesn't really show him that he doesn't have to be afraid. So now, this is basically what I'm saying, like because he's seeing that I'm not gonna hurt him, he can start to warm up towards me. So watch how he's following me now. And when I do pressure, come, I was like such a big scary, person and then now I'm just someone that he can run up to because he knows I'm not hurting him. And it's only took like two or three repetitions. The method that I'm gonna show you, you're not gonna pass the leash to someone else because not everybody knows what to do with a dog like this, but instead I show you how to handle him. 
So the, the, but the concept of the training is the same, is it put him through his fear. Instead of him like being af afraid and being defensive, you're gonna take over the leash and say, nope, let's go close to this person, nothing's gonna happen. But there's a certain way of how you're gonna do that and that's what I'm gonna teach you today. So the first step is just this, good boy. Let's just see kind of like how much he's retaining from the training. It's just repetition of me coming there and grabbing the leash. It's only the second time of me like coming back here into his space. Good, let's go, let's go. He's thinking about it a little bit, completely normal, but he's giving it much, much faster than before. Because this is also building uh, the positive association that we want, that here you take the leash, I'm gonna walk away and then just come and grab the leash from you because that's one of his triggers is when someone's coming close to you, close to his face, like I did in the first time and he's like trying to bite. Now, once someone walks towards him and you pass the leash to me, it's not a big deal and he just walks. Because after, besides this, we're going to do more uh, repetition and add more people, more distractions. So first you watch his body language, you know, right there. He's getting a little uncomfortable, but he's actually looking for a way out. He's looking for directions already. He's not looking to fight with that dog, so that's really good. Then what we can do is just kind of move him around. As the dog is w w walking around us, we're gonna keep him walking. And then just making it very neutral, you know, very neutral for him. Just like walking around, passing by the dogs. Good. He's a little curious about her, that's all really good. He's like trying to go up to her. And we can, it's good for her too, so you can kind of like, like, you know, let them see each other. Good job. Very good. Chanel. Good girl. Good, sit. Yes. Come. Come, come. So it was almost, he almost did it on his own there. It was only the third time. Good boy. Come, come. Yes, that was so good. Because facing is always more intense, so that was really good. Keep moving around, passing by each other. Go back and forth, so they're getting more experience passing by each other. That's good, keep calling call him. That was really good, that was really good. Keep walking away, keep walking away, keep going away. If you walk away, he's gonna be more tempted to follow you, it's like that. Every time he's hesitant, you go further away from him. That was really good, because that was a difficult call for him. Like he had to choose to go by his dog all by himself. Hi. Okay, so like I was saying, the actual training is gonna be that now that he, you have the right tools and the right knowledge and you understand him, so let's say we're here and there's a dog coming towards us, you're no longer gonna make him feel like he's cornered and he has to show aggression. You're gonna get up, you're gonna tell him, nope, you cannot walk at those dogs, and then you're gonna lead the way, come, let's go. Good boy. And you're gonna teach him to pass by these dogs. So if there's a bunch of dogs around us passing by with their owners or there's people walking around, every time he tries to pay attention to them, you're gonna grab him on the leash. Hey, nope, leave it, come with me and lead the way. So it's two steps because the first step is when you do this right here, this, it tells the dog, stop what you're doing. But most people do that and they don't do anything else. So the dog stops for one second and then they go back. It's always that back and forth, they learn to ignore that. So it's, the most important thing is that they're giving him a follow-up after you correct him. So this corrects and then a follow-up, come with me. You show him that he can actually walk around the dogs, he can actually walk around people. You have to correct and then show the way. Most people they correct and they say, no, no, leave it, no. And they're doing nothing else to show the dog how they can actually be there. So instead you lead the way. So you're making him move with you fast, you're leading the way. And every time he tries to pay attention to the dogs again, he's like, whoa, there's a dog there. You remind him, no, stay with me. And I keep, I'm saying that verbally, but remember what tells him that is this leash pressure. Chanel? Good girl. Good. Good boy. Good. Good job. Yes. And then he's able to move along with them. Come. Okay. This is CJ. Um, he is a five-year-old dachshund pit bull mix that we got from the shelter in um, 2021. 
He's a very good boy. He just has a lot of problems with people and um, dog reactivity and aggression because of it's fear-based. And um, coming here was really nice because um, seeing him walk around with other dogs is like crazy. Like, <laughs> um, and then um, your dog was running around and he was doing well. And even though like obviously he still sometimes is defensive, um, I feel like more confident on how to tackle it now. And I'm gonna definitely keep continue what you taught us. And we came all the way from Los Angeles to Phoenix <laughs> to get the best dog trainer. <laughs> we see that you're, I mean, you're the best trainer. You know the tools, um, the techniques, the follow-up, and we've never seen him um, as good as he is. And we've had him for two years. And we've tried to walk him. He, he would, uh, before this, he would pull, bark at people, try and bite them, and then here, just walking around with the other dogs and all the other people. He's a changed dog, and we owe it all to your training. This is Shasta, and she's a rescue, and we've had her since a puppy. She's six years old, and she's a Dalmatian pit mix, and she's dog reactive, and so, um, dog Daddy was able to show me how to kind of walk around a dog and actually get her calm and um, not get her so nervous and she was off leash walking around other dogs and everything and she did not react at all. So a big part of it what I learned is um, just redirecting her and um, exposure to dogs is the biggest thing.